everyone. I hope you guys are having a stunning day thus far. Today we've got an amazing person to interview and he's going to tell us a little bit about his path through life, who he is, what he does and what collaboration within Africa has to do with the Johan Buerta brand. He's a phenomenal designer and we cannot wait for you guys to see some of our collaboration pieces. But now enough about the introduction. Mr. Johan Buerta, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do and what makes you phenomenal. Um, it's always hard to talk about yourself, but <laughs> really, um, I've been in the industry for 28 years. Um, I'm a self-taught fashion designer, mm -hmm. so um, everything happens from inspiration and then hard, hard, hard work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing that gets you on top. So tell us why you started in this path. What, what, what brought you to fashion of all things? I always wanted to be an architect and okay. um, there was no money to go and study. So one day I was sitting at home, wanted to actually um, go and buy myself a track so didn't have the money sat down and made my own one and then after that two two years later i had one of the biggest factories in south africa making wow. track suits wow yeah it's just boring doing fifty-two thousand <laughs> same color track suits so a man of various 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 passions so having gone through your journey in life what would you say is you know the thing that kept you going because i think a lot of business owners especially the the youth um, who do not find job opportunities, but who want to pursue their passion, but can't do it because there's not enough money or whatever reason that is. Like, what would you tell them to do to keep going in terms of reaching that goal? I think the biggest problem in, in South Africa when it comes to fashion design or any other practical skill training, um, sometimes you actually go to the university, you, get, you, you study and everything, but there's not enough practical skill developing. Mm -hmm. So um, what I taught myself is, is that the more you do, the better you get. Mm -hmm. um, in the industry today, it also doesn't help that um, you have staff that can do your work, but mm -hmm. you can't do it better than them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that's where the big lack comes mm -hmm. today. Um, that's, it's actually scary to see how many of the seamstresses, the beaters, actually are getting so old. There's mm -hmm. no youth coming into the industry. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very big um, gap in the market at the moment. But as a fashion designer, you can't just stand there, do the patterns, mm -hmm. throw it to someone and hope mm -hmm. everything gets mm -hmm. done. You mm -hmm. must be able to do the work yourself. Mm -hmm. And through hard work and dedication, you can teach yourself anything. I actually tried and I had to work as bomb in, it in, mm -hmm. in the evenings mm -hmm. just to get um, where I am today, mm -hmm. um, to pay for my rent, to pay for my... But the only way is to throw yourself into the deep end and work. Um, it's the only That's way awesome. to really... You know, and I, I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you, you, you fail, you always get up one more time when you fall. And that's very, very, very important. That's that's great to hear. And I think the, the, the problem with, with a lot of African businesses is that they don't tell the youth or anyone who's starting in the business that it is hard. It's not just going to happen overnight. Now, in terms of the, the Johan Buerta brand, how would you say your brand is African excellence? And, and how do you feel that you excel in terms of the African continent and where you hope the brand to go and in terms of giving back towards maybe even employment mm -hmm. or making a change on the continent mm -hmm. or within the country? What, are, what, what happened, um, we really battled um, to get into SA Fashion Week. It mm -hmm. was actually very hard for us to do. And mm -hmm. we were actually told no. Okay. So we went um, overseas and actually got mixed up with um, Vegas Fashion Week, yeah. where we actually entered one of my friends entered us mm -hmm. for, for Vegas Fashion Week and there was mm -hmm. like 852 designers all over the world that yeah. actually participated in this event. And one day they called us and said, listen, you are top 50. Wow. And I said, okay, that's a huge achievement. Um, out of 852 designers, we're top 50. A week later, we were nominated top 10 and we were invited to go do a fashion show in Vegas where we actually won the whole thing. And um, there I actually saw that our problem in South Africa is the European countries, um, the Americans, all those people, they are actually people who says we are the best, come and prove us wrong. Mm -hmm. We are South African sits in the background and we can't compete against enough. this. Yeah. We're not good enough. And when we took out our dresses, their stuff actually looked like school projects. Okay. I think the handwork and the, and the, and in the industry is in South Africa. Um, yeah. People can work with their hands, they know beadwork, they know colors, they know... So I think the passion and the, and the creativity is already here. We can make it, but I think it's the, the best time in the world now is to take our products overseas because of the rand that's actually slipping down. Mm -hmm. So everyone goes, oh, the rand is down. It's the best opportunity in the world. Just go and, and invest overseas so that you can take your product overseas and show the people what we can do as Africans. 
That's awesome. So there is a plan for Johan Boise in terms of world domination. So what I want to know is how do you think Johan Boerte designs and fashion and just African fashion in general can move forward? What would you like to have changed? What more would we like to see in terms of the growth of not just your brand and your brand within your country, but also worldwide? How can we make that happen? And how can we use that as an empowering message of doing more than just clothes? Because I assume you're in this for more than just the bottom line. That's right. You see, the big thing is, is what I like to do is to empower people, to show people that whatever skill you have, you can empower yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be easy in the beginning. I mean, we battled uh, for six, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, we really, really battled to get into this industry. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the most important thing, if you have passion behind you and if you have, if you have that drive to, you yeah. want to succeed. The big thing in South Africa nowadays is, again, like I said, people feel that um, I am entitled to stuff now. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. You're not going to sit there and someone is going to hand you a business That's and right. hand you. Mm -hmm. Go out there, try to get into a fashion designer. I mean, even go and work for six months for free. Get mm -hmm. that um, knowledge, knowledge, and the understanding how this industry works before mm -hmm. you actually start your own factory. Start mm -hmm. your. You can't just come out of university and then start your own thing, mm -hmm. even if you have money. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to last for a year. In this industry, it's easy to get on top. That's true. The problem is to stay on top. So you have to be better than everyone. You have to improve. Sometimes I make something for a fashion show and the people go, no, no, no. Two years later, that dress sells. Yeah. Then it becomes fashion. So you have to be advanced. You have to be fashion forward. Think differently. You don't have to go buy the most expensive materials. Take your handwork. Take your beadwork. Make material. Make it something different. We are not... Um, overseas, you can walk into any shop and buy anything. Mm -hmm. um, here we are so... Um, frustrated because we can't get everything but when you go and sit down and take a piece of material uh, African I mean there's nothing more exciting than African colors and mm -hmm. African material mm -hmm. and you take that and you take it one step further mm -hmm. then you start being creative and I think that's where it's supposed to go and I mean that's that's phenomenal I love that there is a legacy and you see a legacy in, in, in fashion mm -hmm. In terms of South Africa and Africa, and I keep coming back to that because obviously that's what we are, what would we want to see more in terms of the business aspect of being given opportunities on a global scale? And how do you think we as business owners can make that happen? I think the most important thing is, like I said, for everyone to start at the bottom. Work yourself up. I mean, overseas, it's so easy to get into a apprenticeship mm -hmm. and a fashion designer mm -hmm. in South Africa no fashion designers want to take kids out of universities mm -hmm. out of out of college whatever because they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. so I mean take people even from the street I don't care if you can do fashion mm -hmm. if you really have the passion and I want to learn you get further further with someone who wants to learn That's but true. can't do it than That's someone true. that can do it but don't want to so there is such a small line of um, you can be the best in your class, you can be the best everything, that's not going to say you're going to make it in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. You have to have the skills, the backing of someone. I mean, there is so many people in this industry that will be, oh, I don't know all of them, yeah. but come and get the knowledge. Yeah. Um, come and work for free for, for three months. Um, after that, if, you, if you're good enough, we'll employ you. Mm -hmm. But the people don't want to learn. They want to mm -hmm. come out of university and start their own thing immediately. You know in the business, mm -hmm. there is so many things, the aspect of fashion design is one mm -hmm. small part. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not creative in your business sense, mm -hmm. you have to be fashion forward, you mm -hmm. have to be different, you have to mm -hmm. have a niche market, mm -hmm. all that type of things to, to, to stay in that um, industry and make a huge success of yeah. the industry. Okay, so what I have to say is, is guys, this like I said, he's he's a phenomenal man. But you're also kind enough giving, and but also he has a lot of him doing his own empowerment through through his own way. Um, he has employed a lot of interns and so on and so forth. So when when you have this this program going on, and not because so much you want their knowledge, but because you want to empower them. How would you say if, if, if you were approached by, by a group of, of, of um, you know, people living in a, in a different type of situation than you are, who would say, please, can you come do a masterclass where, where we are or can you come and give back? Would that be something that you would be excited about and pull other people in terms of collaboration to, yeah. to like get back? I'd love to do that. And um, there's nothing more satisfying than sitting there and showing someone to do something and you see that sparkle in the eye. Mm. Oh, that's how they do it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing seeing that whatever you are teaching them is actually hitting the roots. Mm -hmm. um, and that is that's the most 
I think um, even, I mean, when you, when you make a dress and that bride walks down the aisle and you see that finished picture, that's awesome. But just as much as when you take your knowledge and, and, and pass it on to someone else, mm -hmm. um, that is for me, it's like, it's, I love it. I love doing that. I would love to be part of something like that's that. That's awesome. How, what is your opinion in terms of fashion being a vehicle of change, a vehicle of telling a story? Because I think a lot of people are under the impression that fashion is just about getting dressed and looking pretty. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what your opinion on that is. What, what can fashion really, really do in the extent of Africa? I think fashion is a, is a, is a mood changer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be in a bad mood in the morning when you get up and you put a nice color something on. When you get your first compliment in the morning, oh, you look amazing, you feel better. And people don't understand that. Don't just go and stand in front of the closet and take a few things and plan your outfit. Mm -hmm. Plan what you want to wear the next day. Not like me dressing in t-shirt all the time. But the, you, you understand what I'm saying. It, yeah. It's something really, um, it can make be a total mood changer. Um, try on something different. Mm -hmm. um, if, if yellow is not your color, mm -hmm. and you, why is yellow not your color? Mm -hmm. Try it on. I mean, the first two, three people is going to give you a compliment. It's going to change it completely. Right. So use fashion not only as a, be a trendsetter. Yeah. Be different. I mean, there is nothing in this world now. If I want to put my left tacky on my right shoe and wear it like that, it's going to be, a, someone's going to see it and think what the hell is doing, but mm -hmm. someone else is going to try and mm -hmm. try it. Mm -hmm. And the next day is a trend. That's how trends start. Wow. Yeah. No, that, that is absolutely true and I, and I completely agree. Um, considering that next month is Heritage Month, what would you say in terms of the journey of South African fashion? Um, where is that going? Where does it come from and where is it going? Because you've been a long time in the game. And you've remained relevant. Um, and I think a lot of people think you kind of fly under the radar, but it's just your personality because you're too busy giving back in terms of helping and empowering people through their garments, um, which I think is one of the key reasons why Afrinik Sheik and, and Johan Boerte collaborate because we are after the same thing, which is to use fashion to have a bigger conversation. So that having been said, now looking at our heritage and where we came from and that whole history of oppression and not working together and not collaborating, what can we do as fashion owners and business owners to change that narrative so that the heritage of the future is different than ours? You see, my big problem is what people always say is we have to stand together and work together, and, but we can't even do it in our own industry. Mm -hmm. So how the hell are we going to stand together as a nation mm -hmm. if we can't even stand together in our own industries? Mm -hmm. So help. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a designer struggling out there, mm -hmm. contact him. Um, if, the, if they, if they want to ask us something, come in, ask us. Knowledge is free. Mm -hmm. um, I'll even put aside an hour a day to show people mm -hmm. what you can really do. That's mm -hmm. why what we're doing here together is like... Um, being different, yeah. take the European influence, mm -hmm. but use our African yeah. influence in that and mm -hmm. show the Europeans, but mm -hmm. you can put an African twist mm -hmm. on it. Anything that you mm -hmm. do, we can put the African twist mm -hmm. on it and make it something unique. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day is don't ever be afraid to ask for help. Right. I mean, even if you're like, sometimes a student will sit and say, can't we do it this way? I don't know what the hell you're thinking. Oh, yeah. that way. And then I'll turn around and say, but maybe you can. And that's where, the, where it starts. So it doesn't matter how long you've been in the industry. You can still inspire all the designers yeah. or designers that's been in the industry for years. Yeah. So I think that's a legacy that we have to pass on to the new generation. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the seamstresses, the beaders, everyone is getting old. There's no new blood that's coming into the industry. Sure. Everyone just wants to be the designer standing behind the counter. That's not the main thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I don't have my team, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. So we, and, and I think in, in, in the business industry, people have to start realizing that um, each person in the organization got a, a role well, to play. Mm -hmm. If I don't play my role, I'm influencing the whole team. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you start doing that, everyone starts working together. That's right. And then take that further and further and further till, till it's actually global, mm -hmm. working together. So that's why I'm always saying we can't work as a nation together if we can't even in the same industry work together. So start there, start small, change one person's life and that will change another person's life and that's going to change another person's life. At the end of the day, if you, if, you, if you pass, I mean, if you take Dior as an example, he always said, teach every, everyone everything. So when you die, your legacy can go on. That's true. He died hundreds of years ago yeah. and his legacy is still going on because everything that he did, he, was, he taught the other people to do exactly the same way. That's awesome. And that's very, very important. 
Well, folks, thank you so much for your attention and for tuning in. We cannot wait for you guys to see more of what we have to offer. Collaboration, garments of change, leaving an African legacy you can be part of, but also giving back and most importantly, empowering every single human being through everything they can do. Mr. Johan Porter, we love you, as you know. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us for this interview. Should you have any questions or any inquiries, you can literally see all the details down here and give us a tinkle and we will be here to answer all your calls.